slouchy. Uh, you are nice. Ask okay. our readers because we are recording. Hello, Dan Bragio. How are you? Good, good, thanks. Did I say right? It's close, Dan Bragio. Bragio. Bragio, yeah. Where is it from, this last name? Uh, so we, we don't really know where the last name is. Our parents are both Polish, so oh. uh, it's, it's more German, but yeah, the background's Polish. We so you have a brother with a similar name too, and yeah. he is... He's Paul Bragio. Paul Bragio. Yeah, and he's one of the partners as well at IO Ventures, where we are at. We are at IO Ventures. People have a look. You can hear some very nice music. I will have you listen a little bit. Yeah, now it's the music is shy, but it was pumping, and people yeah. are working there, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so uh, half cafe, half workspace, around uh, seven thousand square feet, and uh, we have people working here that you know, pay for rental space. We have people that just hang out in the cafe and work. And then we also have companies that we invest in that work upstairs. Uh, oh, so work. there are, it's a place with several Many service layers, level yeah. agreements, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I can walk by and just use your Wi-Fi. If I drink something, I can yeah. do as a cyber cafe. Or I'm a co-worker. Yeah. Or I can be invested by you guys. Right. That's it. So do you call it like a cyber cafe where eventually you may be invested or? Yeah, I mean, it's really hard for us to like really Or it was it. first an investment. Uh, and I think investments was kind of like the last part. It was always like, hey, let's, How did it uh, start for you guys? Well, uh, we, have, we have multiple partners. So one of the partners uh, is or was a CTO of MySpace. Now he's at a, a company called Social Gaming Network. He's uh, the founder and CTO there. And he's called? Uh, his name is Abel Wickham. Uh, and the other partner is Ashwin Navin. He was uh, CEO of uh, BitTorrent, and now he's at a company uh, called Flingo, and he's the founder there as well. And then Paul Bragio, which is my brother. Uh, that, and both him and I, we co-founded a company called Lafora, and we sold that uh, around two years ago, and then we started IO Ventures. How is it called? Uh, Lafora, L-E-F-O-R-A. Um, and it does? It does uh, hosting forms. So if you want to you know, create uh, a community really easy, uh, we kind of post that. It's like the WordPress forms. Oh. Yeah. And so... Uh, you quit the company or just... Yeah, no, we, have, we, we pretty much we sold it. And so uh, kind of once our term was over, we wanted to do something new. And uh, this opportunity came along. And so... The you are developers? No, no we're not. Company. We're not. We're, uh, we're on the business side. We have a lot of uh, great developers that work with us. And so, uh, yeah, the partners, they, uh, a lot of them started their companies initially in the cafe. You know, they didn't have office space, they just, they loved hanging out at the cafe, and they, their friends would be out there, and they said, hey, why don't we uh, buy a building and do that? And then once they found such an amazing space, they're like, okay, so maybe we can have multiple levels. And then finally, it was, we should also do investments. Okay, you started the cafe after you sold the company? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how long did you did it take for the company to be sold? I mean, okay. Uh, so I mean, how many started, years it was running? Yeah. So we were start, We started this, this this product that was called Metro, and it was uh, like an instant messenger for location. And so this was in 2004 is when we started it, and it was launched in 2005. And so you know, it was like a an instant you messenger. You uh, bootstrap? Yeah. And so it, you know, it showed you people who are nearby. Uh, you know, that was seven years ago. And so it was a pretty cool idea, but people were very scared. They didn't have phones, uh, smartphones, it was just on laptops. And so it was a pretty small market. And so You had to be less smart. Yeah, yeah I know. We were too clever. It was, it, was, it was just very, very early on. And so we changed direction to this company called Lafora, and we were working on that for two and a half years, and then we sold it. And so, yeah, the moment we started thinking about actually selling it was around half a year. Um, was that we, that's when we kind of entertained offers. So it took around six months to finally close everything. Uh, you did receive funding for that company? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and was that like easy, like investors were all tempted, please let me go in? How is, how, how is this? So, so we, were, we started fundraising for just the initial part, yeah. the, the first company. We started fundraising that in 2000. Like around the end of 2005. And so we started in Chicago and then we moved over to Palo Alto. And in the beginning, we had a lot of people interested and excited. And 
we, just, we, we weren't sure some of these investors, so we said, oh, we're going to pass. And the thing is, with some of these products, especially with what we're doing, was very consumer facing. Um, you need to show some kind of traction, you need to show some growth, you know, uh, or you, you're selling them on an idea. But if your company's already out there and it's kind of doing okay, investors kind of are, they're gonna, they're gonna wait and see how things go. Do you think this is an effect of the bubble that burst because people didn't know how to do a consumer internet? I think it's mostly just like, it's just the way you go about investing in a consumer in a company. Um, because someone could tell you this amazing idea and unless they actually see it, um, you know, they, they don't know if it's gonna actually work. Uh, when you're dealing with something that's involved more monetarily, like, you know, some kind of enterprise startup or some kind of service for other startups, you have a good idea of what, what the product would be. Uh, but if you just say, I'm gonna make a really cool social network, you know, what, what do you have to prove for it? It could be a really great design team, you know. If you have like something that really stands out, they'll be like, okay, I believe in you. Or if you say, hey, we're growing 10% month over month, or 20% month over month, or go, okay, you, you know, there's, there's some traction. But if you say, we've been live for three months and traction is okay, they're gonna be like, I'm gonna wait. And so, we kind of were pitching it right early in the product and people were excited. We didn't want some of these guys. Um, and then because of that, it slowed things down when we said no, because then our product wasn't going crazy. Uh, but we received money a little bit later on. Um, and then another year later, we had to raise money again. Um, but that was for the new product. Okay. So, so that was a little bit And some of those investors, are your partners now? Um, no. So the majority of the investors we have really great relationships with. And um, you know, a lot of them have put money into our companies that you know, we invested too. Oh, so, that's interesting. You know, yeah, it was, it was a good exit for them. So they, they still love working with us. And so we always kind of give them companies for them to take a look at and see if they're interested in investing in. So IO Ventures is running for yeah, one year and two, two years. years. Two years. Yeah. And uh, how is the selection prospection? How do you get startups? You, you just pick if you see something nice or you call them? Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of it goes through just our application process. And so, you know, we use a lot of press to kind of let people know. Uh, we have some big names involved, you know, as partners, so people are aware, oh, okay, MySpace, BitTorrent, um, people get excited. Even in it. Brazil, people have heard of them. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, of course. And so that gets people excited. We do a lot of traveling um, and kind of promote entrepreneurship. Uh, Paul, uh, pretty much the three other founders, they went to Brazil two years, around two years ago and talked to a lot of startups. And so we had a lot of uh, Brazilian applications, a lot of Argentina applications. Uh, we went to Singapore last year, so you know, like pretty much when we make these like talks, when we go to universities, uh, we get a lot of kind of inbound traffic from these these countries. Uh, other times, just references from friends, uh, past you know uh, alumni companies, like everybody does, you know, yeah, reading it's, it's pretty much everywhere, blogs you know, and yeah, different channels. What did you notice from entrepreneurs and developers in other countries? Like people were on the same page as you guys with the mindset, or I think it's getting a lot better. I think. Um, I mean, even I'd say almost within the last two years, there is a lot more kind of same same kind of thinking process, same kind of approach to things. Um, it's it's different in I feel like every country or region. Uh, I've noticed in European startups, they seem to like having big teams, and usually investors don't like seeing that. They don't like seeing twelve person companies so early on. You don't know. What At they least, do. yeah. yeah, you know. Uh, Sometimes more than three co-founders. Yeah. What's a, a nice the, 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 the average sweet spot is two to three co-founders. That's what we look for. Uh, we like four too, but uh, you know, it has to be the right proportion of business people, designers, and engineers. It can't be a three business person company than one engineer. So it needs an engineer at least. Yeah, yeah, we and, definitely uh, need someone yeah. from business. Yeah. Yeah, or it could be two engineers too. It's always cool because yeah. one person can kind of take more of the business role. And so you received applications from many countries, and uh, the startups here, and the ones you invested, the ones you picked, yeah. uh, some of them are f selected from different countries. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, Canada. I don't know how international that is, but that is one. And then we have two French companies that we put money to. So, uh, so three companies yeah, yeah, that three are companies. foreign. Mm -hmm. so to say, and yeah. they are in what area? What companies are those? So uh, our most recent one was called One Feet, and it's a, f a photo application on the uh, mobile device um, that's uh, kind of 
challenging people with accomplishments. So, you know, you take a picture of you rowing your boat, and then people kind of vote, is that a cool accomplishment? Is that like the coolest feat for this kind of uh, action that they want you to do? Um, and then uh, the other French company is called Models. Um, play on mobile monsters, and so it's a Pokemon-like game in Tabaguchi style. And, um, Social? Yeah, yeah, you trade, uh, you use location to pick, uh, to catch monsters. So, you know, I open up my app, I see a radar, and then I have to go walk, you know, 200 feet to catch this monster. Uh, so it's using some augmented reality, and then also just some really uh, beautiful artwork for these monsters. Uh-huh. And do you sell virtual goods? Yeah, then, you exactly. Know. You, can buy, you can buy clothing, you can buy food, you can buy eggs that, you know, then hatch into monsters. And people are buying. Yeah, it's a, it's a really great app. They, uh, they launched uh, around June of this year. Yeah. And there is another company? The other one is called DAPT, and that's uh, a, uh, just a really easy way of sharing things with your friends. Oh, web. great. That's the Canadian one. Yeah, that's Canadian. And uh, besides these three international companies, so to say, you have other companies that are American? That yeah, and the rest are American, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the rest are five, two... Yeah. Oh, as far as how, how many more companies we have? Um, We've had 16 companies that we've invested in, so the 13 others are American companies. And most of them are from Silicon Valley, San Francisco area? Yeah, I mean, I'd say the majority were in this, in this area. Either like they were working on the product and they moved to California to work on the product, and then within a month or two they applied to us. But They yeah. need to do this, mm -hmm. to work with you. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, during the, the, the program, the three-month program, uh, they have to be here because we have a lot of mentors, we have a lot of uh, really awesome advisors, like you know, CEOs of companies like Yelp, PayPal, Mint, uh, all these like, really big companies that kind of come in here and, and hang out with our, 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 our guys. Talk. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So it takes three months, and is it like if you pass after these three months, uh, how do no. you do the program? Like so that? I mean, you know, we, we, every company has a different kind of, when they come in, they're at a different stage in, in, in their life. The, the, at least the company's life. So, you know, one guy, one company could just be two dudes uh, that have an idea and maybe some prototypes, and uh, they're just they're, they're they're working on the product. The other one could be already having the working version and they're trying to get you know larger numbers, and then the other one maybe that they're already fully established and they want to just have uh, more connections with investors. And so it all depends on the company. You sign with them before the acceleration program. Yeah, yeah. So we pretty much yeah. once we decide we like them. You know, we make sure we get the documents signed and then we transfer money over and they work with us, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. And uh, our readers might remember a post we published about a Brazilian guy who was here, right? Victor. Yeah. So, what about Victor? He's not mentioned as a Brazilian startup, so how he ended up here? Uh, so, so uh, when the partners went to Brazil, they... Uh, they're meeting up with a lot of important people in Brazil. They had they had a dinner and they uh, they met Victor's dad, and he he was a very awesome, uh, excited guy. And he was sitting next to Paul, and he's like, "Hey, my son wants to get involved in startups. You wanna? You interested?" And my, my brother's like, "I don't know. I, you know, he was an engineer. Um, and you know, since we're we uh, we invest in companies, we don't ourselves need any kind of products. But I actually had something in mind I want to work on." Um, and I kind of worked with, with, with Victor, and so he did a great his job. His dad was into startups too? Uh, his dad, his dad, um, yeah, his dad is in some startups, yeah, he, he does uh, home automation for kind of stereos and things. Uh, um, and... So what was the idea f for Victor then? So it's just a very simple kind of uh, app on the iPad um, for, 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 for NFL football games. Oh, yeah. So like there's this kind of like game in the United States where people have a board and they kind of pick squares. It's really confusing, but it's just like it's like a game to play when you have a lot of friends over and you're watching a football game. And so I wanted just like a really simple one. I just always thought it'd be fun to have on the iPad. And, so you uh, brought him to do that? Yeah, and so he worked on it. Uh, we released it, and he was like, hey, Dan, uh, it was like really fun working, but I kind of wanted to be more in a startup environment because it's only you know him and I were just working together. Um, and so, he felt like a developer. Yeah, well, I mean, it was more like he, he was, it wasn't a big team. It was like me and him, mm -hmm. we were always working together, but, you know, he was hoping to kind of like have like a couple other engineers to work alongside with. And so we're like, yeah, sure. And so we, we kind of gave him a couple of companies that we like, see if he, if he can get an internship. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he was, he was meeting up with Uber, 
and you know the way they do their job interviews is uh, they have him go inside the, the limo and he's like you know the, the CEO starts talking about the product and he talks to Victor and he's like yeah so you know talk to me about what you're working on and you know Victor is like yeah I worked in this cool app and um, I, I want to you know I want to work in startups and I'm thinking about dropping out of school and then the guys are like I like you you're hired and so within within a one car ride. You know, oh my god! At, 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 you know, at That's the limo effect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I yeah. should pay attention to limos then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's always interesting things going on. Yeah. <laughs> how interesting! Yeah, and then you know, he he, uh, moved to, he, moved to, he moved to the states. I don't even know how strong his um, his his understanding of, of you know Objective C, which is what he programmed for for the iPhone was. But he you know he was really uh, determined to learn, and he he built an app for me and. Um, then from that, he was able to get an internship at a, a company that's, you know, that's, that's got a lot of funding and it's, it's going to be a very big company. So just within a couple months, you know, it was a really yeah. great success. People in the States can't even do it that fast. Oh, so he was, a really, he was a really special guy. So, that, you know, that's, that's the big reason. It didn't matter where he was from. That's what they're looking for, like... They're looking for a lot of energy, um, enthusiasm, excitement. I mean... That's why the music here... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah? No, no. <laughs> But no, just you know, Victor was always the coffee then. <laughs> the espresso, yeah. He was always willing to learn, and so people really want that that, that quality. And so even if you're a little rough on the edges, they know that you're gonna you know fix it and figure it out. Who do you know? Someone that is working downstairs, like um, I guess who is here today? Like, is there someone that we should know? Well, um, there was a guy that just was here, I think, earlier on, uh, just like an investor. Um, an investor. Yeah, at Google Ventures, he was here doing oh. some interviews. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I should people, catch him. Yeah, people. Uh, he already. He already yeah. stepped out. But yeah. you know, like founder of Twitter hangs out here at times. Um, oh my god. You know, founder of WordPress has hung out here. Like a lot of you know, it's just a place to hang out, have meetings. A lot of. It's investors. a very known place now because you have this program and you yeah, are. I think also people, accomplishers. People like a lot of you know. This is like a very uh, fun neighborhood. So and it's young. And so a lot of the, like, the, the tech uh, entrepreneurs, they live here. So they want to get some coffee, um, and do some work maybe, check some emails. And uh, yeah, a lot of investment meetings are here. It's just a, a fun place to hang out. What's an average rental here for a small apartment or something like that? You know? uh, okay, so for an apartment If you are a Brazilian area, guy and want to yeah, yeah. jump here and see what happens. So this, I mean, this is, this is a really great area. So yeah. and, the, and, the, and the rates have increased a lot. I'd say 2500 for like a one bedroom. But if you want to get three people in, you could probably do four thousand for three people. So you know, if you get roommates, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier. Uh, but that's by yourself, it's a little more expensive. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. And uh, sixteen startups. Yeah. Do you have sort of, uh, you know, we are going to pick four that are really focused on gaming. Yeah. Yeah. There are some trends that you want to, you mm. know, a little bit of everything. Yeah. So I think. Um, if you look at your yeah, uh, you portfolio, portfolio, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously mobile is big. Uh, mobile's big. Uh, platforms, you know, using Facebook is big. Uh, but we don't have like a like a, a super criteria on what we invest in. The big thing is that we we're so early. You know, we're 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 in the stage where we're investing in companies that are before you an angel investment. And so the idea will like will most likely change. What's your range that you invest like? So we we put in twenty five thousand. And so, uh, but we're I mean, like the first money that's usually put into these companies, and so it's for them to quit some jobs that they're they doing, have yeah. some time to pay themselves a bit, you know, just to survive, build something up, and then go for the larger amounts, the you know, five hundred thousand to one million dollar uh, What did some startups accomplish? I mean, some of them got new investors. Oh yeah, so. Uh, we, we, we we are excited that you know the majority of our companies either get investment or you know their product is so good that they're able to survive just on profit and then uh, have an exit later on. And so um, majority of our companies are, are doing quite well still. Not like very few have fully died. You know, as in like they don't exist anymore. Which one of those uh, makes you more happier? Uh, <laughs> it's really hard, you know, to. Yeah, you won't tell. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, mean. <laughs> I have I have a very like a I guess a fondness for the the French one models, just because like their monsters are just so cute. You, know? like, it's, it's, you just look at you like oh, that's so much fun. Um, but each each startup is doing something really cool. There's a startup that we we invested in called Touch of Modern. Um, but the really interesting thing was that um, 
they started off as a company called Skyara, and they kept on changing because they, you know, they found, you know, they built something that was doing okay, but they just didn't feel like it was it was big enough. So they changed direction. They did this multiple times, and then, you know, after their fourth version, um, they finally figured it out, and they're just, you know, going through the roof. Uh, it's like an e-commerce site, and they're doing great. So that one, like, I, I think I'm really proud of because they uh, they went through some hard times, and they, they finally figured things out. Is there a common mistake that guys do a lot and should pay more attention to? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, the big thing is is to have a really strong foundation with your, your founding team. And so, you know, when we look at companies in general, we want to make sure they've known each other for a while. So, either you're friends or you've worked together for a while, that's a really big thing. Having just said that core, it's really important because then you're not as likely to quit. You know, it, 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 times are gonna be hard, but you're gonna right. figure things out. So friends with a talent match. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not just uh, he's my buddy; he doesn't understand yeah. anything. And yeah, yeah, that <laughs> that won't always work. As long as you guys can compliment each other. Um, the big thing is, yeah, just uh, and, you, know, you have to focus on the product, and then you know, don't worry about other things. Uh, you know, you could be seeing other companies raising money faster than you. Just you know, stay on the path. That's a big thing. So what should people not miss in the coming days here in San Francisco? You know, there, there are events and yeah. such. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm really doing many of the events. I, I know a lot of these guys. I, you know, we hang out just, just in, normally. So uh, I'll yeah. definitely be on TechCrunch uh, watching the coverage. I love seeing what startups are coming out of there. Um, Right now, I don't know if anything's going on. I know you have an event on the, the 13th, right? Yes. Yeah. At um, night, yeah. But, uh, At the Barrel House, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I actually don't know what's, what's going on. And there's going to be a bunch of Brazilian investors, okay. entrepreneurs, mentors there. And so cool. Some pitches, too. Nice. Yeah. Well, thanks for the attention, telling your story, and yeah. success ahead. Oh, cool. yeah.